what do you do after this? So there are a long list of tasks. Now, this is something I guess most of you have come here for this. This is the most important part for you. You might have already tried to install a server, but what do you do after is more important than what you would do before in some many cases, because I feel that is what gets neglected in many server installer installations. So the creating the Tableau initial administrator account, that is something that Tableau gives you immediately, and you can set that up. Set up processes on Tableau server, that is something I feel people miss out on, and I will give a detailed explanation of that. Apply SSL certificates, I'll show you where that's done. SMTP user login, I will show you how that's done. Uh, and the others, the ones after that, are more important ones, which you will have to consider. All right, so creating a Tableau initial administrator account. This one, it's called the initial account. As I call, it's called the initial, as I mentioned here, is the initial account. Do not get confused with the administrator account that you have on Tableau Server. The administrator account that you use in the beginning, when you logged in, it asked you to enter an administrator account. That is your local administrator on the machine. But this, the Tableau initial account, is actually a Tableau front end. I like to call it front end and back end. Uh, is a Tableau front end account. So this is what your users would use to log in. It is really handy to have an initial account and to have a good initial account. So if you're using AD, it has to be an account on your AD. But if you're using local authentication, it can be any account. Uh, you can just specify the username and password, which we'll do in a bit after the installation is done. Uh, but this initial account has full is given basically the first license on your server and if you unlicense you can unlicense it if you want but usually that is given the first license and the first server administrator license so it does have certain special privileges around it uh for instance if all if your users get locked out for whatever reason if your ad stops working tableau still can reset only one account you can reset one account, and that is your initial account. So let's say hypothetically, you have a situation where uh, you logged into a, you, your AD, basically it's locked out, and no user can log in anymore. You need to reset some user account. The only way to reset an user account without going to the front end of the Tableau server is to go to the back end, that is to go to the machine, and from here, okay, let me get the, creation account. From here, you can use tab command, which is another installer. You can use tab command to create initial user, which basically replaces this account that I'm going to set up right now. It replaces this account. That is the only account that you can reset from the back end. From the front end, you can change whatever accounts you need. But let's say for whatever reason, you can't access it from the front end anymore. This is the only account you can change from the back end. Uh, you can, of course, use tab command to create new users as well. That's fine. But let's say something happens and you do need to change one specific account. This is the fastest to change. All right. So let me create an account here. And then after that, we'll go back to the steps given and the post installation tasks. So. All right, and this, as you see, I'm creating a server administrator account. This is again, not the account you would use to access TSM. Instead, it is the account that you would use to access uh, the front end of Tableau Server, All right? So I'm just making a distinction here again. It's called the initial user. So even in tab command, you have the option called the initial user. This is the initial user. And voila, I'm in Tableau Server. Uh, since I do not like Internet Explorer, I'm going to go to Chrome and I'm going to log in from here because it asked me my password again. And I'm in again. And even here, as you can see, it's not secure because I did not provide any SSL certificate yet, which is should be the next step. And I'm also going to add the TSM. 
Yeah. So for this uh, this account, so this is a good description of what I was trying to explain. This account, which is a Tableau Services Manager, this is my admin account. And this account I will is the local admin account. And this account is the account I just created. All right. Cool. And now we're in. Now let's go through the next uh, installer tasks. Oh yeah, something else I do like to do, which I would recommend for you as well, is just to create your homepage, which uh, you can set up your, can open a specific set of pages. Just have this running. It's really saves a lot of time when you have to go onto your machine again and find TSM quickly. Just let it start up here. So basically I've set up my home page as TSM and the Tableau server on the machine. All right, now let's look at our next set of lists. So set up processes on Tableau server. Now this is funny. Um, I think this is a very critical part. These are the processes on Tableau server. Now, recently I was working at a client and the client was like, we, we increase the RAM on our server and we increase the CPU cores that are available but a performance on our server is really bad. It's really terrible. What's happening? And I looked on a server and I see there's only one process of each. And that is a big red flag. That is a big problem. Now, there's a detailed explanation for processes. We can go through each process, but I'm not going to do that today. Just time reasons. And it's just not practical for a tablet server install. But I will tell you about two processes specifically, which is the WSQL server and the backgrounder. These two processes are the most CPU intensive processes that your Tableau server can have. So the VSQL server basically renders all your visualizations, all your views. So right now I have four VSQL server. Now it's good to see the Tableau, when it installed, it automatically dynamically just provided me these processes. It is by no means a perfect estimate the Tableau provides you, but it's pretty close. It is a pretty safe and good estimate of how many processes you need. So they've given me four VSQL server and two backgrounder. If you were to install with like exactly minimum hardware requirements, then you would only have one of each, which is I guess what the client had done. Originally when they installed the server, they used bare minimum requirements. There was only one process installed and then after that, basically they increase the cores, they increase the RAM, but Tableau never checked again how much is the system requirement. They just stuck to this one process. So it is good to use to adjust this yourself afterwards, which is easily possible from the TSM interface. Uh, and that people do right now. So VSQL is basically, VSQL server is your rendering process. So I have four of these processes. I went to the configuration tab and in topology, I have the options for each of these processes. Now the VSQL server, you can see I've got four of these processes. What this means is that I can have four users, four users who log into Tableau and they go and open a certain dashboard. They will see, they can each render on each one of these processes that are available, each one of these four processes. So now the fifth user who comes in basically has to wait till number one is done on any one of these users are done rendering their view before they can start rendering your view. So easily you can see just having more VSQL processes helps having much more users just coming in at the same time and looking at dashboards. So that it is a resource intensive process. So it does not mean I can simply go up to the maximum possible here, which is eight and expect my server to work well. That is not true. Because if I were to do that, then my server would choke just because it doesn't have enough resources. So even one process is not gonna do what it's supposed to do. Um, then you have the backgrounder process. That is the next important one, I would say. The backgrounder process, basically, um, it, it connects to your data sources. It basically creates your hyper files, your extracts. So in Tableau, if you're not that familiar with Tableau, 
uh, you have dashboards, which are the reports I was showing you earlier. You have data sources, which can be extracted, which can be hyper files, uh, which are a condensed file that Tableau creates, which has columnar uh, structure, which has a columnar structure, columnar parsing rules. So it's really fast. So using a hyper is really fast, but creating a hyper is an intensive process. So much so that Tableau has an older format called TDE. And in some cases, Tableau actually says, if you want your extract to be created quickly, go for TDE, but the TDE is not gonna be as performant afterwards. But if you do want to get good performance and are fine with the waiting time, go for the hyper. Just because hyper has to create all the partitions required or any kind of indexing, everything has to be created for this columnar structure to work perfectly. So the background will basically take care of that. It connects your data source, creates this cube, this hyper structure for you and stores that as an extract. So it is a very resource intensive process. Like by very, I mean way more than the SQL Server. Backgrounder easily can take up all your CPU, just in an instant, it will take up all your CPU. That is why you do want to put your heavy extracts. If you have something like a one GB extract or even a half a GB extract, depending on how complex the data is, schedule that for the night. Your users will thank you for that. Just schedule those extracts to run at night. Because otherwise, it can run in the morning, but it can, it'll be a strain. You're going to have problems with the rendering of files. And in some in bigger organizations, I totally understand that you have cases where you do need to create extracts during the day or a live connection, but we're not talking live connections with a backgrounder. Backgrounder is mostly concerned with only extracted connections and subscriptions as well, sending emails from your Tableau server. Um, your backgrounder can is very resource intensive, as I said, but it is possible if you use multiple nodes to have a specific machine dedicated to being a backgrounder machine. So in which case you basically are fine with having that load during the day. But my favorite aspect of the dynamic topology, which is one feature I said of TSM, is that the VSQL server and the backgrounder can be dynamically changed. So what that means is you could be running four or six VSQL server in the morning, and then at night, switch that to six backgrounder. This is possible with the newer version of Tableau. Uh, so there is a Tableau TSM command for that to dynamically change that without having to restart your server. So that is really cool to know. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave VSQL server at four. I'm going to increase my backgrounder to three just because I think that's a better idea. We can run more extracts in parallel. And since the backgrounder has to connect to data, the data server, it's not that intensive of a process, but it's just good to have that as equal as well, just so it can create the connections. Now, as you can see, if I'd only done backgrounder three, I see pending changes here. If I apply the live changes, it says specifically live changes, this will be applied it's taken some time, but my Tableau server, it's still online. I can still access it. And we just need to wait. You can't do anything in the TSM interface, but this change is being happened. But Tableau server, people can go in, people can look at their dashboards and play around at the same time without an issue. But if I were to change data server with it, then Tableau server would basically stop. 